The invitation of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to the Oxford Union has met with outcry from some students. One of them, PPE student Simone Webb, took the decision to convene a protest. She spoke to Charwell. Julian Assange is currently deliberately evading the justice system by hiding in the Ecuadorian embassy instead of facing due process and facing up to the rape allegations. I don't think it's appropriate that the union should both contribute to the minimisation of rape allegations in society and invite Julian Assange to speak as an award ceremony celebrating justice-seeking, integrity, courage and truth. Some people would say that that's what the union's supposed to do. It's invited pretty contentious figures in the past. So in what way do you see this as being different? I see this invitation being different because it's to an individual who is evading his European arrest warrant and the allegations of the Swedish government about rape. If the motion I'm proposing on January 16th to as a council passes, I in my capacity as Vice President Women will be supporting the protest. Since the interview, the meeting was held and the motion was passed. But what did the union have to say about the event? Charwell asked their spokesperson. Well, the union was founded on the principle of free speech and this is still very much like right at the heart of what the union stands for. We were created as a space where people could freely discuss and debate controversial issues. Um, Mr Assange has made a very significant contribution to the field of whistleblowing and we really feel that it's possible to discuss his political views and opinions without in any way either condoning or sanctioning his alleged private actions. What we would like to remind everyone is that this event is not primarily about Mr Assange. We're hosting an award ceremony for individuals who have been judged to have made outstanding contributions to integrity and ethics in intelligence. Well, I'm joined here now in St Aldate's by our deputy editor, Tom Beardsworth. So, Tom, is there any way that these two sides can come to any sort of agreement? Well, put simply, no. I mean, the protesters are unlikely to settle for anything other than the union withdrawing Assange's invitation. Uh, and from the point of the union, the union aren't really likely to do that because the union is doing what it does best, what it loves to do, namely inviting controversial speakers because it's good for publicity, it allows them to, to present themselves as a bastion of free speech. Now, having said that, uh, although we're not likely to get a reconciliation, most of the protesters would, protesters would say they're protesting against Assange, they're not protesting against the union's right to host Assange. And it's an important distinction to make because I don't think what we have here is, is hatred between the two sides. So what's at stake then for the union and for the protesters? Well, for the protesters, um, they think that what is at stake is is a big deal. It is potentially legitimising, or an important institution in Oxford, legitimising sexual assault or legitimising evading, evading accusations of sexual assault. And for the union, it's, it's a bit more difficult to say because, as I've said, the union doesn't mind having controversial speak, having controversial speakers um, come to the union. What they mind is being portrayed as incompetent. And remember, this is a week in which we've already had two muck-ups already. The first being these revelations that John Lee, last term's union president, regularly rigged the speaker ballot. And the second being this bizarre invitation to Nick Griffin that was uh, supposedly signed off by the president, except it wasn't, and was then retracted. And if this is seen by the Oxford community as yet another muck-up, by the union if it unravels in some way or a lot of people think that it was just stupid to okay the invitation then that could have lasting damage for the union uh, for, for quite some time. Well thank you very much Tom um, it looks like we've got two intractable sides um, in this dispute and we'll have to wait until next Wednesday to see if it generates any further commotion. This is in fan reporting for Chawal Online.